So we are working on this Goodman Recon R410A system. Kelvin is going to diagnose this system. Kelvin, what are we going to do first? First, I want to check the electrical panel, make sure everything's clean. You want to check the electrical panel, okay? The customer's complaint is the AC is blowing out warm air. Calvin is going into my Vito Pro-Pack Texec Sal tool bag. And he's getting one of the Klein drivers. He got the long one, so he'll have to go back to the tool bag and get the shorter one to get the 516 down the other side of the electrical compartment. Kelvin is taking off that 516 screw up the other side of the electrical compartment. What I did when we got here is I, I noticed that the condenser fan was running. It was blowing out cold air on top of the discharge of the condenser. So I pulled out the disconnect. Kelvin went to the truck and got the tool bag. So now he's removing the electrical access panel cover. And he is going to see what's going on. How's everything look, Kelvin? A little bit dirty, but the capacitor looks, looks all right. It's not bulging or anything. Okay. All right. So what are we gonna check next? Now we're gonna check, get the pistol. I'm gonna check the refrigerant. Testo is grabbing the te test Testo. Kelvin is grabbing the Testo 557 digital manifold. It's got four ports on it. it allows us to vacuum as well. And we're going to see if there's any pressure in there. I would have went with the Testo smart probes for minimal refrigerant loss, but that's just me. That's just me. I'm just obscene. He's making sure all the valves are closed on the four port manifold. <clears throat> now he's going to hook up the low hose, which is for oh, the, sorry, the blue hose, which is low pressure, and the Red hose is for high pressure. We're gonna hook that up to the gauge and see if we have any pressure there. Hey, Calvin, you know, I was watching this video. As I was opening the cap for the liquid line, high side pressure, I noticed that there was, you see, you see oil residue in the cap. Yep. So that indicates that the Schrader pin can be tightly squeeze you know so that the oh the straight of core is leaking yeah but as i was saying before i got really interrupted by a phone call you know i was watching this video i watch a lot of youtube videos and this one guy posts this video about how he saved seven thousand dollars by installing his own ductless mini split system right yeah i'm like seven thousand dollars i'm like what guy happens to be in vegas he's got a youtube channel i don't know thirty-seven thousand subscribers and he just posts like do-it-yourself stuff so I watched this video, right, Kelvin? Yeah. And um, every most of the things that he's doing, like dealing with the refrigeration, refrigerant, yeah. wrong. You know, he hooks up. Wow. Well, be quicker, Kelvin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he hooks up a vacuum pump and he says, oh, it's got to run for half an hour. And then, uh, you know, let it sit for half an hour. As long as it doesn't go with the positive pressure, then we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy has no idea what a micron gauge is. Zero clue what a micron gauge is. Wait, so he didn't pull the vacuum? I didn't see the he, entire video. He didn't oh, pull he pulled the vacuum, vacuum, but he just uses he just used a regular analog manifold. Oh my and, God. and he was telling his viewers that hey, you know, you just got to pull it down for half an hour, and then uh, it'll go into negative pressure, 
and then uh, you know turn off the pump, close the valves, and if it doesn't go up to positive pressure, then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you bought this Daikin on Amazon for like fifty bucks, twenty four thousand BTU units. So so I criticized him in his comments, and what does he do? He cyber bullies me. Cyber bully. Yeah. Anyway. Calvin, can you get hook up that gate that thing already? Yeah, can't. Hold on. Why can't you? Okay. All right, what are you going to do next? Well, I want to turn on the system. See if my pressure's on. All right, so what's your diagnosis, Calvin? Oh, hold on. What's what's the answer? What's the diagnosis? Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. no what did you just say, Calvin? No, no, no. What did you just say? Uh, no, no, no. It's wrong. It's wrong. What did you say? I said that the evaporator was was, uh, was frozen. The evaporator is frozen. That's wrong. Got equal pressure there. What's the diagnosis, Calvin? We need to add refrigerant. All right. Kelvin's final answer is that we yeah. need to add refrigerant. Kelvin, what's the outdoor temperature right now? The outdoor temperature is about, I'd say about like 80, like around 80 degrees. What's the outdoor temperature, Kelvin? What are you doing? Just go to the thing. No, I don't have. Uh... You don't have weather. It's, you have it. You have the weather app. No, I know. I, I got it. What's it called? Oh, you have all your notifications off. Yeah. It's oh, look. What, what's seventy-three degrees? Seventy-three degrees. So a good rule of thumb that you have proper charge is that the refrigerant pressure will equal the outdoor temperature. It's seventy-three to seventy-three in there. You turned on this system, and our pressures and temperature did not change, Kelvin said that first he said the evaporator was frozen the evaporator would be frozen if this is hooked up and the low pressure is low and this high pressure is high because all the, the refrigerant is going to that frozen evaporator right and this would be very this would be low this would not be equal but we turned this on so first kelvin said the evaporator is frozen then he said no that wasn't what i said then he said that we need to add refrigerant Obviously, we don't need to add refrigerant. Want to try again? Do you want to try again? Yes or no? It's an easy question. Yes or no, Kelvin? Five, no, no, four. No. You don't want to try again. Okay. Kelvin, we turned on the system and the compressor did not turn on. Do that again. No. <laughs> the compressor did not turn on. Why didn't the compressor not turn on? Move out of the way, please, Calvin. One of the first things we're going to do is make ourselves a little more room here. And we are going to check out this capacitor. Calvin, let me get a needle nose, please. Let me get a 5 16 First thing we're going to do is we're going to discharge the terminals by touching them together. So that way... The capacitor is discharged. Now Kelvin's gonna give me a 5 16 I'm gonna take out that screw right there. Hold the phone, Kelvin. Keep there so we could, uh... Now, 
The only thing that's off right now is the disconnect. When you remove this capacitor, you want to be very careful not to touch the contact, which is getting 24 volts. Kelvin right there and there, 24 volts, right? Because the contactor is closed in, right? Right. All right, now, to make our life easier, if we can't see it, we're gonna get a little Sharpie. Kelvin, get a Sharpie. We don't have. Should be the black thing. No, we don't have. I have a sharp. No. Really? They're all gone. Yes. Okay. Can't read what that says. I don't know, but that's yellow. This is brown, which is fan. And these two. I'm gonna bet you that's compressor. So let's get the voltmeter. Get the, the not not get that one. This capacitor. Sorry for the vision there, guys. It's a 45 dive. We're going to test this capacitor. Kelvin's going to hold the camera. We're going to put it in there to read microfarads. And a good way to know what's what here is that Fan usually has one terminal, right? Term usually has three. No, wrong ones. I'm gonna put the screwdriver with the right spot. Hard to read, but pretty sure that says. Let's see. That old man arms. Let's see. So fan Let's is see. is one, herm is three, common has four. General. So common to herm should give us forty-five. Forty-five. Give us one. It's giving us nothing. That's giving us five. See that, guys? So common to fan is giving us almost five. five. Common to herm giving is giving us nothing. nothing. And generally when a capacitor is dead, it, sw it swells up on the top. In this case, it's not, right? Right. So we have a defective capacitor. What a difference a capacitor makes. But Kelvin, Kelvin would have added refrigerant to this system. No. That, would have, that, was his, that was his diagnosis. His second diagnosis. The first diagnosis was frozen evaporator. Guys, you gotta be very observant. Every good, great technician has to be observant, has to fully, fully diagnose the system and make a determination what's going on. Don't overthink things. Sometimes it's always simple. So, this is, we're approaching Kelvin's second probation week. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Let's have a vote. You guys saw the video. He said the evaporator was frozen. It needed a refrigerant. Then he gave up. He gives up. Kelvin, Kelvin gives up. Just gonna do a little summary with Kelvin. So, Kelvin, tell me. We'll start with, what did you learn on this service call? really diagnose the situation as a technician um, to listen to all sounds and what has to start first the uh, order of operation and to not just guess but to really look at the equipment so your two original opinions on what was wrong that was a guess, was guess. so you're just guessing why are you just guessing 
Do you get paid to guess, Kelvin? No. You get paid to learn. Right. And you get paid to, to you know, utilize the tools that you've learned. Right. Okay.